welcome happy new year welcome to you here in the sanctuary welcome to you there on the holy interwebs good to be together yes yes okay couple of things right a i'm always amazed when um the platform reader and i totally don't coordinate and then the reading they choose is exactly aligned with what I'm about to say. It just blows my mind and I feel all I have to say is amen and walk out and <laughs> my job is done for me. So thank you, David. Um, love the music, all the music selections. I remember, so I've been here for about seven years and I remember when Joe first started to learn the guitar. So less than seven years, right? And um, so, wow. And then I'm just going to share my dream with you because why not, okay? It goes like this. This is last night. It goes like this. I show up for church, and it's packed. And I'm thinking, where did all these people come from? I'm not unhappy. I'm just surprised. Then I come up here, and somebody had stacked these platforms on top of each other. So when I got on top... <laughs> I was, my head was hidden behind that, um, what's that called, the, the, the beam, behind that beam. So I couldn't keep eye contact. And I thought, that's just like weird. I can't even straighten out and I still can't keep eye contact. Then, turns out we had a band. Chris was playing the, the, the piano and we had a band and we had guitar and drums and it was awesome music. But then, the moment they start, stopped playing, the other band members, not Chris, the others, started fighting and cussing. And I, and, I, and I said, no, stop it, not here. If you have to do it, save it for later. But no, not now, not now. <laughs> Meanwhile, people, you know, first waited for me to talk, but I'm trying to make the peace there, figure out how can I keep eye contact and, and you know, figure out this. And then I just noticed that people like lost interest and started leaving. I thought, what? That never happened. When I usually, I, I usually am able to keep such good eye contact and people are interested and they're leaving before I even can give the beginning of my talk. It was a nightmare. And these are the nightmares, nightmares I rise from to come to you in the morning. And I still come to you. Anyway, um, New Year's. To me, it already it feels funny. I don't know if it feels funny to you, but it feels like we've been into this for so long. But it's just like the first Sunday of the year. And I don't know why it feels that way to me. Um, but we have a tradition here where and everybody has access to a piece of paper, an envelope, and a pen. Yes? Who doesn't? Everybody does. Good. Because we have a tradition here where we write a letter to ourselves, and then you will put it in the envelope, you will address it to yourself, and then turn it in or leave it on your, just leave it on your table, we will collect them. And then six months from now, we will mail it out to you. And you will receive this letter and you'll be thinking, wait, what? This is not my handwriting? What is happening? How come I'm receiving a letter from my own self? Because you will forget about this. And then you will open it, and then you will read this letter. And then I want you to tell me um, how your uh, experience reading your own letter. Somebody told me this morning that they got it, they read it, and they were pleasantly surprised, A, that they put serious thinking into writing this letter, and B, that some of those things did happen. And that, in fact, they're not sure if they hadn't set the intention that some of those things would have happened. So we will do this year, this again this year. We do this every single year. It's, it's amazing. I like to do this. So it's the new year, right? So it's the time when we think of intentions, we think of accomplishments, we think of all the things we failed last year that we will surely correct this year. All the things that we have never been able to accomplish, but this is, 2024 is my year, right? 
This is when I'm doing it. And so at the beginning of the year, we start piling all this pressure upon ourselves to do better, be better, um, and then nothing happens. Everything goes back to the same thing. And then we just reinforce the feeling that, oh, we're not change makers. Oh, we're losers. Not of weight, though. Not of weight. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it just, it just perpetu perpetuates this, this um, narrative of ourselves that we are just not quite, we don't cut it. We're not quite as good as others that we see who just keep accomplishing, who just keep producing, who just, my goodness, look at the heights and the depths that they reach. And it's not us. It's just never us. So, you know, there have been many um, homo species throughout history. And uh, today, there is just the homo sapiens that are left. And Homo sapiens is a weird species, um, especially in this Western world. Homo sapiens decided that life is about accomplishments of a sort, of a kind, okay? Accomplishments that can be measured, easily measured. They're blingy, shiny, um, usually goes with some fancy title, that's an accomplishment worth living for. If you have accomplished that, then we highly deem you, you deserve respect. You haven't wasted your life. And then accomplishments of another kind, where is introspective, where you develop love, where you develop compassion, where you care so much about the quality of connection with others. That is mostly valued in different parts of the world, maybe eastern parts of the world, but not here. In this world, we look for high intention, tremendous accomplishments, and then you get respect, adoration, and acknowledgement. And I think that this gave way to two more species. And is the homo anxious <laughs> and the homo paralyticus. I named them homo anxious. My God. Do you relate? Anxiety. Yeah, there it is. Anxiety is that I never do enough. I always do the wrong thing. If I do the right thing, I don't do enough of it. If I do the wrong thing, that is which defines me. Never the right thing. It's the mistakes that define me. It's the mistakes that will haunt me. It's the mistakes that will determine how people see me and how I see myself. That's the one I'm going to focus on. The homo anxious has lost sight of the big picture. Like, um, in the big scheme of things, what does this really look like? What does it really mean that I messed up here? What does it mean? Or if I didn't accomplish that thing, is it really that big of a tragedy? And then also perspective that I did accomplish that thing, give myself credit for that. Homo anxious is miserable and it's more and more of us. And I know that this species is spreading because of how many antidepressants are sold in this country every single year. It makes for some very highly accomplished pharmaceutical CEOs. Um, and then Homo anxious give way to another species, is the Homo paralyticus, is the one who is so scared of failure that will rather do absolutely nothing. We'll pretend that they don't care. We'll pretend that it's just not even important to them.
to get involved with anything because failure is so scary. So they do nothing instead. Do I have that even in my family? Yes, I do. So is this life then a good one we created? And in the big scheme of things, is this what we were going for? Because this is what it's looking like today. And the problem with this terribly achievement-oriented world, that by default, it creates two groups of people, winners and losers. The ones who don't accomplish like these, must be losers, because these, by golly, are winners. Yes? But that's terrible. So, would I want to perpetuate that? You know I don't. So if you think that the letter you'll be writing to yourself today will perpetuate that, you got another thing coming. <laughs> because it won't. I don't care about how much money you want to make this year and whether you'll make it. Fame, the pounds you want to lose, the shape you want to get into, I don't care. And I would like to hope that neither do you. Whether you get to pay off that debt this year or not, shall will not define you. Shall not and will not define you. So instead, Chris, bring it on. Instead, this is what I want you to think about. So take your paper, take your pencil, and here's what I want to th you to think about. Think of the most important relationship in your life. Your husband, your wife, your child, your parents, your sibling. Most important relationship in your life. And then think of the ways that it is lacking. Where it's, there's something you're not getting that you really want to get. It might be respect, kindness, compassion. You don't feel seen. You don't feel heard. Just something, something is just missing. As life would have it, usually we don't get what we don't give. So chances are, where you feel unforgiven, right there you also don't give forgiveness. So I want you to focus on how you hold back from that relationship. Do you not forgive? Maybe you don't listen. You don't hear them. You're too critical with them. Your expectations are constantly unmet. Change that. Work on that this year. Forgive where forgiveness is called for. Heal the most important relationships in your life. Give compassion. Just 
be honest and admit where you hold back where you punish and punish no more how do you punish silent shoulder withholding intimacy holding kindness withholding praise where praise is due be brutally honest try to impress there's no one to impress here don't be holier than thou be honest and work on those most important relationships in your life heal them but there's more
chances are that wherever you hold back from others and however you hold back from others you also hold back from yourself if you're hard on others you're probably 10 times as hard on yourself where you can't forgive another you probably hold a huge grudge against yourself in that area when you're not kind to another chances are you can't be kind to yourself in whatever area you can't extend compassion to another chances are you're withholding it from yourself so turn your page over and write how you shall stop withholding from yourself how you will begin to forgive yourself how you will begin to give yourself compassion in which instances you know you you know those dark places the ones that you've encapsulated with guilt and shame heal them heal them with sunlight with kindness with compassion your time has come. You find that this is my this might be a little bit harder to write. Because this is a grudge you've held longer than any. Here you've withheld for so much longer than with anyone else. You are the longest relationship you've ever had. And then when you are done, place it in the envelope, seal it, address it to yourself, and just leave it there on the desk, on the table. Six months from now, you will receive the strange self-addressed envelope. 
Open it. Read it. And then, I would like you to journal six months from now. See what's changed. See how, how it has impacted the quality of your life, the quality of your relationships. If there's still room to grow, be honest and keep chipping away. Wherever change, positive change has occurred, pat yourself on the shoulders. Love on yourself. You. You little change maker. You the one who's willing to heal the world. You're the one who's willing to shift the paradigm. You're the one who is learning to look at the big picture, at the things that really, truly matter. You, the one who's willing to align heart and mind set things straight be a healer among us a healer within you wishing us all the best new year ever and so it is